One of the hidden gems here at John Ball Zoo is the Frog and Friends building. Let's see who's inside. When you first enter Frogs and Friends, you're greeted by our dart frog display. This exhibit has multiple species of dart frogs, and dart frogs is actually a large group of frogs. There's about 80 different species, and they're all found in Central and South America. And we've chosen some of the prettiest species here so that they all sit out in the open and visitors can see some of the behaviors that they would naturally do in the wild. The bright skin coloration is an indication that their skin is toxic. So if a predator were to try and eat one of these frogs, it would taste pretty bad. And then the predator would always remember that color combination is something to be avoided. Here at the zoo, we have a unique amphibian called a Sicilian, which is ag actually in their own group of amphibians that not many people have heard of. They're characterized by not having any legs and no tails, and they don't even really have eyes. Most of them live underground, but there's an aquatic species that we have here at the zoo, and our female is actually giving birth today while we're filming this. So you may see a little baby in the exhibit here. They're actually live bearers, they don't lay eggs. Some Sicilians are egg layers and some are live bearers and this group is actually a live bearer. This is our golden poison dart frog. These guys are unique in that scientists believe that this species has the most toxic poison of any animal in the world. Here at the zoo, our frogs aren't toxic, and that's because in the wild they eat ants to make their toxins. And here at the zoo, we feed them a variety of different food items, but we don't feed them ants. I'm here with John Ball Zoo's conservation manager, Bill Flanagan. Say hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Now, not only is Bill a conservation expert, he also has a lifelong passion for herpetology. Now, yes, herpetology is a hilarious word, but what it really refers to is the study of amphibians and reptiles. Bill, can you tell us a little bit about why you love all animals, scaly and slimy? I think it's because there's a pretty big diversity of reptiles and amphibians here in our own backyard, so it's something that I found a lot as a kid and kind of never grew out of. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm guessing now that the weather is warming up a little bit and spring is here, we're probably going to start to see some more of these animals. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about when the best time to find them is? So when it's above 40 degrees and a little bit wet outside, that's the best time for amphibians in the spring. Usually right after dark is a good time to hear frogs calling and you'll get salamanders crossing the roads. Very cool. So if frogs are making lots of noises at nighttime, we're probably going to hear them more often than we see them. Is that right? That's correct. And it actually gives us the opportunity to count them. So as a citizen scientist, you can go to Frog Watch USA and learn how that you can go ahead and count those frogs and contribute to conservation of amphibians right in your own backyard. Very cool. Is there anything else we can do for conservation of frogs and friends? Really, probably the most important thing you can do for conservation of frogs and friends is get out and enjoy the spring and see frogs, see salamanders out there, listen for frog calls. And there really aren't that many calling at one time, so it wouldn't take that long to become an expert in the frog calls in your own backyard. Very cool. Thanks so much for answering our questions, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for watching at home. Make sure you watch out for more videos coming your way on our Facebook page, on our YouTube page, and on our website at jbzoo.org. Say bye, Bill. Bye, Bill.